Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at how to clone your computer's hard drive to a smaller SSD using a Cronus True image. Now, it is important, of course, to make sure you have sufficient space uh, on the SSD for the contents of your hard drive. So if you have more data stored than the capacity of the SSD, this will not work. Um, but if you have sufficient space on the original hard drive that it will all fit, then this shouldn't be an issue, depending on a few things like how the system is partitioned. Um, so what we are going to do first of all is we are going to choose the Rescue Media Builder. And using this, now you have two options here. There is Simple, which will create a Windows PE based boot stick, or we have Advanced. If you go to advanced, you have the option of building one that is Linux based, which is sometimes useful if the Windows PE version doesn't work for you. Um, but generally, I would say use simple and create a Windows PE image. I am using a two gigabyte USB stick here that I just keep spare purely for this purpose, which is in on drive G. And you can see here, it's going to start a Windows recovery environment, sorry, based media. Uh, and it will use 800 megabytes of disk space. So we are going to click proceed and I will rejoin you once this has completed. So with that having completed, we have this message here saying rescue media has been created successfully. So we are going to close that and we will eject the USB stick from the machine. And now we are ready to switch across to the system which we are cloning. So we are going to insert the USB stick and wait a moment for that to be detected. And we can see that's come up as so. So we are now going to click onto the start menu. We are going to press on the power button. We are now going to hold the shift key and choose restart. This will take us to an option menu uh, where we can choose to boot from the USB stick. Uh, this is simply an easier option than going through uh, the sort of and working out the boot menu key for the particular device and tends to work a bit more reliably. So we can see here now we get our options menu. We are going to choose user device, EFI USB device. So having waited for the system to boot up now, we are in the Acronis True Image uh, Windows RE environment. And because we want to clone, uh, we have our SSD plugged in over here on a USB adapter. And we are going to say Tools and Utilities, and then Clone Disk. Now here we get options, so we can do Automatic, which is generally the most useful for, uh, you know, if you have a simple partition structure where we can just let Acronis resize things as it sees fit. We also have manual options for how we are going to move things. So we are going to choose that just to see what options are available. And we have here our one terabyte hard drive. We can see this is the machine's main hard drive because it is mounted on a serial ATA interface. This second stick here is actually the disk we are running Acronis from. Now you obviously want to be very careful here. So this is the source disk first. So what you are cloning from, what you do not want to do is overwrite the data on your main hard drive. So this will then analyze the drive and take us to the next step. Um, what you will find if you have a disk which needs to run check disk, you will need to let it run and fix any issues it finds before doing this, otherwise it will only want to clone to something the same size or larger, and it will basically do a um, you know, bit by bit transfer of the entire drive, including empty space, which will take a horrendous amount of time, uh, particularly for larger drives. So with that having completed, we now get a list of disks to choose from on the system, and we have here our SanDisk SSD USB and it is showing as not initialized because this is a brand new drive. Obviously if you have already used the drive in the past this will show as initialized unless you clean the partition table with disk part uh, and then choose it here and we can see currently there is all unallocated space. Again if you have used it for other things we will see partitions on there. 
And again, it's going to look at the drive and check things over and come back to us in a moment. So now, because we're in uh, manual mode, we have the option to either copy things as is. Now, this is not an option because the partitions on the one terabyte drive will not fit onto the 240. Uh, next is proportional, which will do things the same way as uh, the automatic mode, where it will try and work out the best way of arranging the partitions itself. Or you also have the option of manual. Now this will, I believe, initially present it proportionally, and then you have options for shrinking or resizing partitions. Um, I generally wouldn't recommend this unless you have um, one partition which is very large, one which is very small, and you want to adjust the amount of space on these um, because it is a little bit fiddly um, the way you adjust free space and so on. So on here we can see that it has basically done a proportional, so we have the large amount of space here for Windows, and we can go in, so on the recovery partition, for example, we can shrink the partition down to only you to only the size of the used space on it, uh, and basically you can enter on the partition size, you could say 0.1 gigabytes, and it instead is going to go to the minimum size it could be, and we can see here that the free space after it is all that space. So if we take that and make it zero, it will move the space before, and that way we could then create a gap. So we can see here we then have unallocated space. We could make, again, this one down to its minimum size move the space to after, which means it will push everything to the right. And then this way we could, again, if we enter just far too big a number, then tab through, and you'll see there, it will then on that main partition, make that as large as possible, no space before it, no space after. And then you can see, so these ones have been minimized in size and the basic GPT uh, partition for the main Windows data has been maximized. However, uh, for the system, I'm just going to use proportional. That's just how you go through and do the manual editing if you choose to, but I'd recommend proportional. And finally, uh, we are presented with how the drive looks before, where we can see it's entirely unallocated, how it is going to look after, where we can see the partitions being created proportionally, and also the critical thing here is it says the selected disk will be restored as is disk layout remain GPT. Uh, that is because we have a GPT uh, boot structure and uh, UEFI booting. And so we are happy with all of that and we are going to press proceed. Again, it's going to think for a moment. And so the operation will progress. How long this depend, uh, takes will depend on how you are connecting the drive. Uh, if you're connecting it through USB or SATA, it's obviously going to be a lot quicker uh, than if you are connecting it via USB 2. And also how much data is on the drive itself. So I'm going to leave this copying and we are going to pick it up once things have completed. Now with the process having finished, we get the confirmation disk was successfully cloned and all we need to do now is switch off the machine and fit the drive into it. Now obviously uh, the process for doing this will vary depending on if you're on a desktop or a laptop and the exact um, you know, way that your manufacturer has put their laptop together. So we do do specific guides on how to physically fit the machines with the drive depending on different laptops we have tested. You can always ask in the comments if you have any questions on how to do this. A lot of manufacturers do make service manu manuals available uh, if I don't have a guide explaining how to do it for a laptop like yours. Now having fitted the drive into the system and we can see we have the same desktop but the C drive is now the SSD with the lower capacity. Uh, we also have the D drive uh, for the Lenovo recovery partition. Now, sometimes you'll find that recovery partition is um, basically small 
uh, with very low amount of space on it and will notify you continuously that the drive is almost full. Um, these generally don't need, <laughs> need these generally don't need to be mounted. So what we can do if you are finding that happens is you can say find the partition that it's warning you about and assuming that you know there is nothing on there that Windows needs to access, you can go in and say drive, change drive letter and path, remove the drive letter from it. It will give you a warning that you will no longer be able to access this drive until you reallocate it a letter. And then we will see that will disappear in uh, the Windows File Explorer and it won't give you any low disk space warnings about that again. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you've got any questions, of course, do ask me in the comments below. Uh, hit like if you found it helpful and subscribe if you'd like to see more from us in the future. Thanks for watching.